So, hello, Lars Mo. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for being here. It's really an honor to have you here. Oh, oh. yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thanks a lot. We're going to talk about some beautiful things. And first, I would like to introduce you to the people who maybe do not know you yet. Lars Mo, you are an author, you're a mystic, you're a musician. You've been traveling for decades in the, in the realms of Jesua, Mary the Magdalene. You've studied the Aramaic language, which is, which is the language um, that was spoken in the time when Jeshua and Mary the Magdalene lived. They spoke that language, and I want to hear a lot about that. And um, you were a musician um, and a famous musician in Denmark. And um, you've traveled all around the world. Your books are published worldwide. And there was a moment in your life when spirituality came on your path. And this became like a doorway, maybe, to a new kind of living, a new way of living. Um, can you tell, tell us something about you coming onto the spiritual path and what have you found there and what makes it so so wonderful and beautiful for you it really started when i was quite young i was eight years old and i was playing one sunday morning with my little sister uh, it was a summer morning and the sun was coming in and suddenly just by this i just for a moment, it was like the ether opened up and I could see the, the net of light that is behind everything. And uh, what, really, what really shocked me was that uh, I could see through my sister, you know, and I could see through the furniture, I could see through the walls. And, and this net of light was just continuing in keeping everything together. And it was only wow. really like, you know, like... Phew, and then just like that it opened and did it stay open or no no the, uh, then two years later when i was 10 my little sister died from a brain tumor wow. two, and that really really made the whole difference and that was actually the start of my my journey because um, i was suddenly all these this opening came back and and it was a permanent thing for a few years and it was because I did not know what to do with it, I did not know what was, it was very frightening. I could also, the most frightening thing being that uh, the adults were say I felt that they were saying one thing and doing another. They were not being honest or they were estranged. You know, they, they really, they weren't really aware who they were and why they were here, you know. And to a child, that is the most uh, scary thing because you depend on the, the adults. So for some years, and I mean, my parents were really trying their best, no doubt. They also had there to, to deal with, you know. <clears throat> my father was totally heartbroken because my little sister was his darling, you know, and he was totally out of it. So my mother, who was a hairdresser, who had a shop in, in the flat we were living, she was the one who was keeping everything together. And from day one after my uh, sister's death, she was determined to go forward and trying to, you know, so there was a lot of things, but it meant that I, in school, I was in the school I was in, there was more than a thousand children. I could not bear to stay there. I was too mm -hmm. sensitive. But they, at the same time, they did not know what to do with a child like that. So I think they were relieved that I did not show up. Oh, yeah. So I had a lot of uh, free time. I just, and that was how I started to find refuge, uh, refuge in, in churches. And it happens to be where, when um, one day the one the organ player was uh, rehearsing, and that sound of Bach and Messiaen and all those great composers, it was really like healing me, you know. Yeah. So I started to visit all the churches here in Aarhus, knowing exactly that on Wednesday I could go to this church and this organist would be practicing there or I could go there on a Friday and you know so every day I could actually go and just sit there and listen to all this music so it in many ways it was the start of my mus musical uh, upbringing and also my spiritual um, it started that one day I asked 
my first prayer really to God where I said, please show me, give me a sign that my sister is still alive somewhere. Yeah. And then a small feather was coming down from the roof and just lying just in front of me. Mm -hmm. So then I knew, okay, there is a God and my sister is there. Wow. And then um, when I was 14 years old and I was really, really, really out of it, I received a book from an anonymous sender. Uh, to this day, I don't know who sent it to me. And it was actually from a, a book of a Sufi master called Hasrat Inayat Khan. Mm. It was aphorisms. And uh, the first thing, I just opened it randomly. And the first sentence I, I met was, if you will approach us, we will bow down and lift you up. Wow. To me, this was the angels talking to me. And from that moment on, I knew I was not alone. Yeah. So then um, I, and actually I could see in, in the back of the book that this movement had a department in Holland. So I wrote them and got my first book in English. And I, mind you, I could not speak English because I did not go to school. So I actually learned to read English from the book of Hassan in Khan, where wow. it was talking about healing. Yeah. So that became my first uh, really, you could say, education. And I read that book over and over again, not understanding half of it, until I started to understand more and more. And I still have the book with me. Mm. And also the book of aphorisms. So um yeah he meant a whole lot to me and wow so that was the the start for me what a great well this book what a great gift and still you yeah. don't know who sent it and uh, yeah wonderful then i uh, I, t I started uh, you know the this was in the when in the 60s and the music came in you know uh beat music, wrong road, the Beatles and stuff. And that was my rescue because I did not know what to do. Yeah. So I got together with a group of, of, of boys who were in the same position as I They They, they were trying to find a way out. Yeah. Like they everyone. Not, yeah. They could not cope with all this. But yeah. So we did not know what to do during the summer. So we went to Israel on this tour. We had a contract there and I was not thinking that, you know, it was only when we came there and one day we played in Bethlehem, next day in Jerusalem, then in Nazareth. And then it started to on me, wow, we are actually here where Yeshua was walking, you know. And, and in it, these days, was there already in your life, uh, did you already feel a connection to, to yeah, Yeshua? Yeah, 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 exactly. So we came to Qumran on a, a day off. Every time we had a day off, we were taken somewhere to see the land. And, you know, we went to Qumran, where the Isin uh, mystery school was situated, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls and all these things. And uh, when we came there, the guide was showing us around in the ruins of the old uh, monastery or university, as it was. And uh, he, the guide was telling us, and over there was the... the the scriptorium and over there was this and there was that and suddenly i heard myself say hey sorry to interrupt i think over there was this and not that you know wow and, over there, and everybody was just and all my band members they were looking at me if, if i was crazy you know and on that tour there was also a uh, big old german professor he was actually standing right behind me and I could feel his big tummy uh, next to my back, you know, and he said, I think the young man is the right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And, and, and that was really um, like, you know, me coming home. I knew at that time that I needed to find out more about the scenes yeah. and the connection to Yeshua. And yeah. that was the start, really. Mm -hmm. so I would say for most of my life, I've been into studying the Essenes and the connections, Jesuit's connections to them and what they really meant and how far back it goes, you know, because yes. they go back to be in the beginning of time, really. Wow. And yeah. I really want to, to talk about this a little bit more because um, thanks to you, um, this, this has, for me, it has really opened up. Of course, I... 
I, I already knew a little bit that the story of Jesus, how it is told in the churches, mm. um, is not the true story. Somehow this had already opened up a bit in me. And reading your book, uh, The Old Manuscript, uh, where you talk about your connection with the seer, and maybe we can talk a little bit about that too. But you talk, okay. you talk about yeah, the, the truth, the origin of the mystery. You already mentioned it a little bit, mystery school, where Jeshua came, came out of. And also Mary the Magdalene mm. uh, played a very important role. Mm. What can you say about um, the origin and the original, um, oh, the origin of the teachings of Jeshua and Mary the Magdalene? You see, that it's, there's something very basic one should know about this, because this is that in, in that, at that time, there was not a belief in, in reincarnation. It was a fact, you know? Why? Not because they had fancy ideas or anything, but by experience. They were actually doing practices that is, you know, and that is what, what divides them from uh, quantum physics today, because the quantum physics to, of today, they are really on the same um, path now towards how things were, were created and that there is a consciousness in the, in the universe, you know, the universe is conscious. it is intelligent, you know, but these people, you know, the quantum physics have all those theories but the Essenes and people like them, they knew from practice and experiencing that um, they could go everywhere, anywhere. You can just read the book of Enoch, which was the, one of the main uh, books of the Essenes, how they could, how they were able to go back in time, you know, to before everything was created. They could go anywhere. They could read the book of life. And that was exactly what the seer was doing, for example, at, at one level. And Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet of America, was doing the same, you know. And it is actually to uh, Edgar Casey also that we know a lot about the Essenes and Yeshua and their workings together, you know. But it you can you can um, you should imagine that Yeshua was not the only begotten son; he was the first soul, and he came in already in in atlantis and in in lemuria but as a spirit first of all yeah. that was before everything was was created or manifested physically so they came he came in as meant to be a kind of a mentor or big brother or a matrix for everyone else to see see this is how this the experience you are going to get now and the the possibilities you are going to get through an earthly incarnation will will be like this you just have to follow this man you know and he incarnated as uh, iao in a spirit and then as adam which means blood and earth and then a whole range of incarnations that uh, ended or and culminated with Yeshua, the Nazarene. And, um, but you should also imagine that this entity have incarnated on other planes than the earthly. He have been incarnated on other planets in other star systems. That same entity is just from the same mold of sons of God or daughters of God who have been sent out, but it is the same entity mm -hmm. different, different faces, you know, on different planes, you know, spreading the giving um, all the incarnated souls the possibility to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But we should imagine that we have, remember that we got free will when we came in here, because that's part of our experience here. And the reason why we are here now on Earth a lot of, of, of the souls who are incarnated now, and especially some of the younger ones who come in now have never been on earth before. Wow. That is why they, they don't know how to cope with the silly rules of, of our uh, existence here. Yeah. And they are actually here to break that rule, those yeah. rules. But yeah. instead they are met by diagnosis and medicine, you know, and all this shit. 
but they are actually here to show us that there are other ways yeah. of seeing things you know so what is happening on earth today is actually that everything is being bro broken up you know we are breaking up all the norms and rules and you know we used to do this we used to do that. yeah but it's outdated now mm -hmm. because there's so much more to humans but all that is why we we experience for example the past two or three years culminating with covid and fear and all these things it is all man-made yeah i will not go into any theories or uh, conspiracies or anything i i just can tell you that that is how it is you know there is power here on earth who don't want this uh, evolvement to happen yeah yeah very clear yeah and this is also what happened probably in the time well when 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 mary was just erased from, oh, from yeah all the yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can see i mean it's there's people who think ah it can't be right true that that so many people can be involved in this but just see just go back and see what is happening in america you know they're shooting presidents they are lying and cheating and being corrupt and at the same time they're pointing fingers at the russians and at the yeah. and that yeah. and i'm not saying that the russians are any better but uh -huh. there is this power game going on that has nothing absolutely nothing to do with us other then it is a it, it is a possibility for us to make a choice. Yes. Now we have to make the right choice, Absolutely. even if it means that we lose our social status, our everything, because we are we are losing it anyway. And what because do you see as the right choice? It is to be truthful and be true to who you are, and wow. forget all the 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 all those uh, fears and lies and stuff and have the guts to stand up and say, fine, if you choose that, that's your business. I'm choosing this. Yeah. We should also, there is a, a, um, so much um, fright of, de of dying, you know? We forget totally that we have to go one day, we have to leave this place. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. and, I don't understand that people are so scared, shit scared about this because it is only an, an a kind of initiation. And if we knew our Christianity, if we knew the real teaching of Yeshua, we would know that he knew all about that and the scenes did. And he was trying to, to show us there's no, um, it's no big problem. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, a bridge from this, uh, way of being to a higher way of being you know yeah and we have so many uh, near-death experiences around the world that tell us exactly the same yeah so there's nothing to be afraid of yeah so if we can if we were not so shit scared there would be no one who could who could really uh, control us in the way that somebody is trying right now yeah and i think that is really part of yeshua's teachings you know he's saying Remember, I'm not the only one. You are all God's children. If you follow my example, you can do even greater wonders than I, he said. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard anybody tell us that in the church. This is very important. He's yeah. actually telling us to do something. What was he doing? He was healing people. He was raising them from the dead. He was, why? He's, he gave us all the answers. He said, for those who have faith, anything is possible. Does that mean you need to have blind faith? No. In Aramaic, the word for faith here means that it's it's based on some uh, uh, a knowing that we are all carrying in our hearts intuitively. We might not be able to put it into words, but that doesn't it, 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 it's totally not the matter. You know, it is that we know about and we trust it. And we stay with it you know every time we find ourselves in trouble we run here there and everywhere or everywhere else but then where we was were supposed to go but we should just go home yeah go home you know i had a grandmother who said to me already when i was if i was out of it she said sit down Lars, relax count to 20 and take a few deep breaths 
Mm -hmm. How difficult is that? Yeah. Instead of running here and there, go back home. And that is has always been the, the remedy that Yeshua was trying to 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 give to his uh, fellow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and in these times, it's so the distractions are getting so strong. Eh? It's so normal to sit behind the computer and the telephone and and to find your connection outside of yourself exactly. instead of the place where it needs to be found. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so this is the huge challenge now that we we are faced with. Why are we actually here? Mm -hmm. Because maybe in a in a short while everything will be taken from us. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are talking about that there is there is a food shortage and uh, there is a economic uh, crisis on the on the way. But you know, just stay centered. Yeah, and what I find so beautiful about these teachings is that this, the core and the essence, can never be taken away from you. Everything else can be taken away, but this is who we are. Yeah, and if enough people would sit together and start projecting light instead of fear. Yes. We will change this. I mean, there's no way that these dark forces are going to get away with this. No. People who are trying to, 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 to control everybody else will in the end lose control over themselves. Yeah, in a hard way, you get it back. History have shown that always, you know, uh, for a while they can have their their uh, famous uh, 15 minutes, but then suddenly something else will happen and they are gone and they will be gone forever. They will never come back. Yeah. And we should remember that and we should not be frightened by all this stuff, you know, we, but the only way you can be you are afraid of all this is that you you forget who you really are. Yeah. And we have no, we are not connected anymore. Uh, but still, we have Christianity. We go to churches. We, our children and grandchildren are being baptized and confirmated. And we still don't know why we are doing it. Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, that's how we have always done. But, but why are we yeah. doing it? Yeah. If we have no trust, we, we were supposed to do this because it, it would connect us, you know, to something. Yeah. But it's gone, you know. Yeah. There's no connection. No. So why are we doing it? This is the question. You know, this is what my new book is. It's a very personal book. And uh, it's actually about my, um, I was invited a few years back to be part of a documentary on the Aramaic language. And I've been to Israel many times because uh, since the, the 60s and um, visited Qumran and uh, a special cave. I've done a video that is called the Gate of Light, where I visit that cave where Jeshua and the Essenes were doing that initiation called 40 days in the desert. Mm. And there I, I went, um, when I did that uh, film, I went to that cave uh, and we did, I did that uh, old chariot of fire. I've uh, seen it. Yeah. 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 And what happened there there was a jewish cameraman with uh, doing this and he had never been there before and he did not know what i was going to do and when i did it you know he was totally shaken by it because he did not know that a, a non-jew like me would know a ceremony like that he he's a capitalist himself so he was really moved by it and when the light started to move around in the cave you know uh, he was so shaking you know you can hear his testimony in the in the video but the book is all about that trip to ah, okay because when before i did the the video there i went there on my own for that was the third or fourth time i was there and um something happened i i really i felt asleep and i was away for eight hours or something and then i woke up and it was dark and I was connected to the ether or to, to the book of life, so to speak. And I had access to um, a book called the book of Asap. And that is what it is, uh, what I also are writing about here. What was in that book? 
what it, did it say? You know, there was a lot of information, a lot of teaching. I was connected to my own Essene background and all these things I'm sharing uh, with the reader in that book. Great. So there's really many, many, it's, a, it's my most personal book to date. Um, uh, and maybe the most important book where I'm trying to find words for something I was not able to find words for before, you know, ah, yeah. Yeah. like new things. So in that way, it's, it, it, it has, has been uh, important to me, you know. And the title is beautiful. The title is The Light Within a Human Heart. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but and it's telling uh, how we are connected to the ethereal book of life, where yes. the information uh, about each one of us is, uh, and um, also about historical uh, uh, things, you know, and uh, also about the future, really, because there's no past and no future. It's it's all happening within a realm of now. So yeah. And of course, that is very, very difficult to grasp. Uh -huh. We don't have to grasp it as such. We just need to try and and connect to that level. And I give some uh, example on how I'm doing it. I'm not saying that what I do is the, the right thing to do or the only thing. It's the right thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I've come to the conclusion that it's very important for me to stress that to people that remember that you, it's your experience that counts. Mm -hmm. It's not mine or anybody else. We can inspire each other through the experiences we have had each one of us and mm -hmm. share it with each other. Mm -hmm. But when the day is over, it is your experience that counts for you. Right. And you must also find your um, your tools, how you can get connected. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So in that way, is um, this is also something that everybody who works with, try to work consciously with these things, should have in mind that always you need to question things. You need also to question yourself, not to be judgmental, but sit down. Why am I doing what am I doing? Why do I choose choose to do this? Why? You know, always to be trying to to be to sharpen the knife, so to speak, the tools. You know. I like that. And yeah. you also you also wrote or or you said it in a video. I can't remember, but about the seer. Um, he helped very many people, and every day at the end, at the end of the day, he would sit down and 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 and, and connect with the universal forces and and see, okay, where was I fully online with alignment, and where could I have done it better? Is that true? Something like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. That was what he did. You know, and yeah. he, he was not afraid of facing himself, and and he always wanted to 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 to. Uh, heighten the level of his work you know yeah and it's, uh, there, there was also another thing that i learned a lot from just being with him in that way because sometimes he he would just n not be able to really do what he really liked and then he he was sensible and he said to people when they phoned him in the please try and call me in a week because i'm not optimal mm -hmm. right now yeah and so he took responsibility for that also. Yeah. Even if he did not know why he was not able, you know, he just felt, hmm, I'm not connected these days. Something is going on. And he actually said, it's not only a matter of you and I that we have to go through things here in life. Sometimes there's also things that have to go through you. Mm. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. Really something to because you you know the feeling you wake up one morning and for a few days you feel off somehow yeah and you don't know what is really wrong you just feel mm, you are kind of low and that is maybe when things are going through you yeah and, and i have found out in my personal um uh, thing that i th actually think that there is group of groups of people who are things have to go through them now for a period. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly it's another group. Of I don't know what is the difference between the groups of if it's their star sign or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to recognize that because it also takes sometimes away from the personal and the only me, but it connects exactly. you to a greater field. Yeah. 
So the next thing is, of course, what kind of things are going through us? Mm -hmm. I think it's something on a on a collective level that has to be purified somehow, yeah. or being recognized, yeah. or being taken care of. And that group who who are um, where these things are, are going through this group, they, each one of those people in that group who can be worldwide, they are dealing with it in each their own way. Yeah. But yeah. just think about it, Jesper, if everyone was conscious about it. If wow, we, yeah. And, and actually, just think instead of the silly news that we have each day in the papers, the, the papers, if they were said, yeah, the next week there is uh, the, this issue that is being dealt with through this group. Some sort of weather menu, but then on the soul level. Yeah. Just think about it. Yeah. It, it, it would be possible if everyone was aware. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, uh, and that's another thing that we should just know that we are already enlightened. Everybody mm -hmm. is. You know, mm -hmm. this crazy thing about, yeah, I want enlightenment. Yeah. Well, why do you turn, turn your back towards it then? Mm -hmm. You think there's something happening out there. Mm -hmm. You're totally misled. It is there where you are. Yeah. You just have to realize it and start to act accordingly. And yeah. then you will be connected to it, you know? Yeah. Take Beautiful. responsibility for it and start. Yeah, but you think it has something to do with you being elevated, flying high up in the air, sitting in a lotus position with a halo around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe on one level that is. But if we can start to, to uh, treat each other reasonable, in a human way, you know, exactly. that's where it starts, you know, it starts actually at the supermarket, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, respecting each other, you know, yeah. for whatever we are going through. Yeah, you, know? you can say anything and do anything, but what, how do you treat your neighbor? How do you treat your children? Exactly. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Lars, I want to ask you because you already said it, we are worldwide in a, in a, in a situation where there is a great deal of oppression. And um, this has been going on for it from for ages now for a very long time, and it, it feels like the, the, the grip is tightening. Mm. So the ones who are trying to control are really doing their best. But at the same time, there's a great awakening going on. Yeah. And you all also talk a lot about the divine feminine and the more feminine qualities moving forward. Can you say something about this? The divine feminine to me is something that is why I'm, I'm mentioning or focusing so much on the divine feminine is that we are still dealing with not the divine masculine, but with the masculine uh, patriarchal uh, powers that is so primitive and, and it cannot move beyond its own uh, nose or tail, you know. It's so absurd uh, in itself, you know, absorbed in itself. And um, that's why we need to, to have more focus on the divine feminine. But at the same time, I would also say we need to, to the divine masculine. So it's not one or the other. It is actually, I t I'm talking about both of them. But yeah. instead of always have that focus on the masculine, uh, like, for example, the Messiah, we forget that all the big avatars have had a female um, uh, partners, you know, and that is very, very important because they are like, for example, Mary the Magdalene was the teacher of the female uh, disciples and Yeshua of the male disciples. Yeah. The the wedding at Cana that we can read about in the New Testament was actually the wedding between Mary Magdalene and Yeshua. You know, that happened straight after that Yeshua went from that cave from my video the gate of light where he had sit, sat for 40 days that was the last initiation right after he had been baptized by john in jordan river and he went there to put himself in a so-called unprotected state that is what is meant by desert or wilderness in aramaic if you go out into the wilderness or the desert you cannot hide anywhere god can find you and that is what is meant by it so he sat there fasting for 40 days facing his own shadows the wild animals of the desert and satan his own ego ego and he passed through that initiation and straight after he went and got married at cana 
with Mary mm -hmm. Madeline, who came from um, the therapists in Egypt where she was initiated. Mariam the Magdal, Mariam the Exalted One, and he was the Nazarene, the initiated one, the one who knew or the one who was set aside for a higher purpose. That was what it really meant. <clears throat> and mind you, Nazareth did not even exist at the time of Jesus. If we had believe the historian Josephus who wrote about Galilee, the, the smallest hilltop in Galilee, he described in his huge work, History of the Jews, but never ever did he mention Nazareth as a book. But we know that the Nazarenes were as a sect already mentioned in the Old Testament, and the Nazarenes were part of the Essenes, you know, a small group of, of uh, initiated people within the Essene group. John the Baptist was one of them. And, um, but it, so from that moment when they were, um, they were married, they started that mission that lasted three years. And you can read in the New Testament, you, despite that you have tried to write her out of her very important position, um, she's there. She's always there, you know, but he's turned into a former prostitute, which was yeah. absolutely crap because she was a moon priestess. But uh, it, I think it's five years ago that the, the Catholic Church have admitted that there's, there's no reason to call her a prostitute. You cannot find any word in the New Testament that would uh, give uh, trust to that, you know. Yeah. Instead now she's called the disciple of the disciples, hmm. which is something, you know. She's yeah. even above all the others. So now they, and I met a priest once in a, a Catholic priest where we, I was talking to him about it and he said, the Catholic Church has always known who Mary the Magdalene was. Oh. But, you know, this was the first, in the beginning of the church, there was some men who did not want this feminine thing into play a part, you know. Like Simon Peter, he did not understand Mary Magdalene. And she was supposed to be the one who should carry on the, the movement. But, of course, they did not want that. So from that moment, you don't you, you don't hear anything about her. Yeah. At that time, there was it's funny enough because there was a movement uh, in in the Middle East. There was actually many or some um, initiated men who who were walking around with initiated women. You can read in the Acts of uh, the, the in the in the New Testament in the Acts um, of Paulus that. Um, He's uh, describing Simon the Makers, who's, who's walking around with his prostitute, Helena, who's his, you know, they're walking around prophesying, healing, doing exactly the same as Jeshua and Mary Macklin. Wonderful, yeah. And there were many of those. Men, there were some couples who, this was something that started up because I think it was at a time where in within the mystery schools they have come to the conclusion that women was such an important part of this because they were inside the mystery school now they wanted to to bring it out also and i think even some of the essenes did not understand the teachings of Yeshua when he started to go out in public because they wanted it to be behind closed doors oh yeah but he he knew that this was something that was meant for everybody yeah. So, um, and we should remember he had also his teacher within the the school of prophets, the Essene school of prophets at Carmel Mountain, was Judith, um, a woman from the Zarathustra uh, tradition who was an Essene herself, was uh, at, uh, the most important teacher for Jeshua. Wow. So, uh, so the women have always been there, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It makes it so soft. And when you say about their marriage, it, it just touches me so deeply because it also shows that it's all about love. It is. Really? Yeah. yeah. And this is just healing the world, if we could acknowledge that. Yeah, but there's so many dogmas that we have to <laughs> cut through, you know, because you could see 
that uh, video I just uh, did for some time ago about the female messiah speech to the world, it it created so much noise from a special from American Bible Belt. Really? So that that really, us, yeah. And that, you know what is funny is that, for example, the the, the sleeping prophet uh, Edgar Casey, he belonged to a Bible Belt. He was totally um, traditional Christian, you know, and when he started to have all these visions without knowing it, and he was told afterwards what he had been saying, he had never heard about these scenes, but he provided us with so much knowledge about these scenes. He even, I think, 20 years before the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, he, he, he prophesied that there, there was something being found there at the Dead Sea that would prove about them. So. We have a lot of knowledge from him, for example. It's just a pity that there is such a, um, what do you call it, rigid kind of Christianity going on in America that it's built up on hell and hellfire and sin and guilt and all these things. Yeah, It's just so a pity, you know, and I really, really, uh, feel for those people, you know, that have, because it, they are not bad people, you know, not at all. Mm -hmm. It's that it, it has nothing to do with the love that Yeshua was preaching, you know. No. How can you, how can you be a Christian uh, going through the dogmas and forgetting about that you should never judge your fellow man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. it doesn't make sense really, you know. No. Thank you, Lars. Yeah. It's so beautiful. What 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 do you feel that in this time um, could help people the most? You already have said a few things, and you've got a wonderful new book, "The Light of Human Within a Human Heart." And what do you feel that can help us as a as a human civilization? It is to to realize who we are, that we are spirits who are right now caught up in a body. You know, we are physical here, but we leave the body when we are leaving the earth plane and the body is becoming, you know, it's just dust to dust. Earth. Yeah, yeah. So we are only here for a very short time, you know. What do we need? What do we want to, how do we want to spend our time from here? To eat and getting fat, to collect a lot of cars and houses and stuff, things that we cannot take with us when we, we leave here. It can be taken from us like this, you know, just yeah. an earthquake and it's gone. Yeah. So why, what the hell, why are we doing so, spending so much time on these things? Why are we here? Who are we? What are we doing here? You know, like the Essene said, we only have one life, each one of us, but it is forever. <laughs> That's beautiful. We, we there's appearances and then we step back, then we come like Shakespeare said. Before we enter the stage, we are giving a costume and a robe, and we go in and we say our our lines, and after that drama, we bow and it's either rotten tomatoes or big applause. Whatever it is, we go out and we reflect of what we have just experienced until we get a new set of costumes, a new book of saying, of, of lines to say, and we go in and perform our role until we get so clever about it that we find out, okay, I don't have to do this anymore because I think I've learned my lesson now. Wow. <clears throat> so we are here to transform darkness into light, matter into spirit. We are here to transform all the craziness that has been created uh, ever since man first stepped in here and start to follow his example. What did he do? And not follow the crazy dogmas of how some people thought what he was, but actually trying to, what did he say? You know, you know there's actually some of those people who have attacked me who don't even know what is written in the New Testament. For mm. example, it's a place where Jeshua is quoting the book of Psalms and he's saying, remember, it is written that you are all gods, all gods. It's almost blasphemy. Yeah. What do, do we mean by that, by, by gods? He means that I'm not the only son of God. 
you all you all have this within you remember the kingdom of heaven is within you and kingdom of heaven in aramaic is actually malkuta de shem aya shem meaning that image of god in which we were born it's the the seed of light it's the sacred seed of life within us that can never pierce because the shem aya aya means which is forever so when he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is within us he's actually pointing to that light within a human heart that can never perish that is us you know that is you that is me why should we and he's actually saying in the new testament you should not put that light underneath the bushel don't hide it away because that is your real the real um fuel that you're going to go go on you know don't mess with it you know yeah and what is happening we are messing with it we are forgetting it we are trampling on it we don't want it you know because nobody have told us about it yeah they go the other way around the church that was their only thing they had to do you know to tell people who they what we are you know what a world would we live in if that would have happened yeah but um so this is why i i think this is what I'm trying to do to share these things with as yeah. many people as possible and to tell them this is you, you know, you are already enlightened. You are don't buy this stuff that you have to you have to do this, I have to do take responsibility for it and try to you know what is prayer for example. Prayer is a knife that cuts through your own noise and into that kingdom of heaven. And I start when I started to work as a therapist I was really experimenting with a lot of things, see what, how could I work with these things. And I found out if the, the, the prayers I wrote myself was the most strong, you know. And it doesn't matter if they are poetic or beautiful. Write your words because they, are, they mean something to you. So in that way, they will be much more effectively opening up to that um, just of, of you know to into the the kingdom of heaven where where that power is within you you know yeah. beautiful prayer is a knife that cuts through the what noise. You say the mental stuff into the kingdom of yeah. heaven yeah exactly. and um i have uh, this is what i've been working with very simple things you know it don't make it more um uh, difficult than it has to be you know keep it simple and you can do this in the supermarket everywhere you don't yeah. have to sit in a lotus position or if you are not able to meditate okay yeah you can do something you can always be aware you know yeah find a simple way and that's what i'm trying to to inspire people while in, in in my books you know so lars where can people find you you are you are always traveling all around uh, the world, actually. Um, can people, people can visit you on your website, Lars Moo, uh, uh, dot Yeah, on my website, there, there you can find, and I have a YouTube channel uh, on uh, where you can uh, find new videos. Yeah. And all the old videos I've done, I think there's right now 90, more than 90 um videos with things i work with and uh, yeah there's so great. much videos there's so much books you 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 offer uh, you have a you offer a he uh, well you have um created a place where people can get free healings you offer so much so for people who feel inspired please visit lars Mu and on there is um a, a, a healing uh, free healing uh, website called Hearts and Hands. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, dot DK. Yeah. It's based here in Denmark and it has hundred, more than 100 uh, um, healers yeah. for free. They're not working all the time every day, but two times a day, a group of those are, are sending out healing to those who are on the healing list. Yeah. So you can just go in on that website and you can, you can, um, put in your your information and mind you you don't have to put your personal information just your your first name and the city you live in and what what kind of 
problem you have yeah. and then for a month you will be on that list and then you'll have to to get back to the group and say i want to to continue or i'm off now and i'm just tell them what, if you are any better or great and i will uh, put some information in a text with a video so people can yeah. easily find yeah. all these things very very fine because and, uh, and lars yeah very I think yeah. I I try to to um, also that the prices for for my workshops are not too high because I want uh, everybody to be able to attend if they want to. Great. Of course, one has to make a living also. So yeah, of course. To uh, to um, I'm not in this for the money. I'm in here for the work. You know. Yeah, that's great and that's obvious. Thank you. Lars, a, um, a part of this show is that I offer you um, a little gift, which is a, a, a heart song. After this conversation, I, I, I just tune into the, to the energy and let the music and the words flow. And I hope it gives you and the listeners something. And after that, if you feel you want to um, uh, add something as a last message to the viewers, please be very welcome. So I will just, I hear the first, uh, um, tone. If we'd all remember where we come from Where our souls reside We are made of light Moving through the ages Discovering what lies inside waiting we are made of the same love And this is the true story What we're made of And we can all stand up And we have to And we need to And we will free ourselves from old stuff That has been hanging around for ages Creating some weight, we will elevate into a new song, into a new world that is made of the heart and the light within. Dive within and find the treasure. Take every chance you can to come back to the soul, back to the source. You know what's good for you. Remember what's true and follow the path of your unique heart, because you know what's true inside. Shine your light Bring it out into the world For all of us to refine Who we are Shining stars of the heart Thank you very much Thank you very much Lars, of this for this beautiful conversation, it has touched me deeply. And is there a last message that you would like to give to to the people? Don't forget who you are. 